Hey guys, this is Leah with Scott Leroy Marketing and in today's tip video I'm going to show you how you can add a third or fourth signer to a form in DocuSign. Um, a lot of these forms right, will have the two initial boxes on the bottom of each page so I'm going to show you how you can add a third and fourth initial box if you have additional signers. Um, now before you go through this tip, please keep in note that depending on your area, you should have an additional signatures addendum um, that would allow you, you know, those signers, those third and fourth signers to just go ahead and sign that addendum, which would apply their signature to the main form. So that might be an easier process if you'd like to check in with your broker to see if you have that or maybe uh, your productivity coach could be able to guide you on that as an easier route. Okay, but if you do want to go ahead and add a third and fourth signing option to an interactive form, this would be the steps here. So first of all, uh, I am in my DocuSign room. So if you are not already, feel free to pause the video and you can go to realestate.docusign.com to go ahead and log in and click on your room to open that. Right. In theory, you would already have your form in this DocuSign room. And if you're watching this video and you're not sure how to start transactions with command and DocuSign and access your forms, I'll include the 20 minute overview in the YouTube description below. Um, so if you're looking for a little more of the DocuSign basics with command, that would show you that. All right, this is a little bit of a next level tip. So I'm going to go ahead and open the form that I have pulled in from my DocuSign forms. Okay, now this is a DocuSign form, so this is an interactive form I pulled in from my library. Um, so I can tell that by if I open it, I can click on any of the fields to go ahead and edit that. So that's how you can tell it's an interactive uh, form. All right, so that's important to note for this tip because this part is on interactive forms, how to add the additional signature boxes if you see these additional items. So I can go ahead and edit the form as needed here and then click Save and Close. All right, so I'm fast forwarding that part, but just to, you know, give you a heads up of what we're doing here on the bottom, right? I only see a spot for two signatures. And even though I don't see the initial boxes pop up here, okay, they will display on the form automatically when you pull it into the envelope like we're about to do. Okay, so as long as this is a DocuSign interactive form, meaning I can fill it out, right, I can just click to start typing. That means that the initial boxes will automatically display on the form when we bring it into the envelope. And in this tip, I'm going to show you how we just need to manually add the other two signing fields. All right, so again, we'll save and close on the very top right once you've edited that. And of course, you can pause the video at any time to go ahead and complete the action so you can follow along. So once I have edited the form in my DocuSign room, I'm going to click on the Envelopes tab on the very top room toolbar. Okay, and these envelopes, if the section is blank for you, that's normal if it's a new room, but these envelopes are just any time that I went ahead and sent forms to my clients to be signed. One or multiple forms, think of snail mail here, any time I sent an envelope in the mail to my clients to sign. So I'm going to add a new envelope by clicking on the new option on the top right. So I'm under the envelopes tab specifically in my DocuSign room. Click on new on the top right. Okay, so in this envelope here, this is where I will go ahead and, and pull in my document. So I'll select from room docs. And of course, guys, if you usually create your envelopes in a different way, that's totally fine. There's a couple different ways to do it. But I'll go ahead and click my room docs here to pull the form that I need to be signed in, let's say I need those two, and click Add Selected. Again, I just accessed, I just pulled the forms in by clicking this blue button right here that says Room Docs to pull in any forms that I have currently in my DocuSign room. You can always X out of any that you don't need or move those around as needed. And then when I come down here, I'll add the recipients. So when you are adding an interactive form, right? So it's an interactive form. I can tell it's a, that blue forms icon. My mouse isn't over it. All right, so that means, right, I could just start typing in it. Right? That's important because it changes what's under add recipients. So as long as that was an interactive form, you can go ahead and click the pre-tagged roles here to go ahead and select your clients from the dropdown. I have 
client one and client two selected from the drop down here. And this is pulling over from the opportunity that I created in command. So that's why my clients are already in here. So I started my opportunity in command. I'll click add selected. All right, so now I have my first two clients in here as needs to sign. So now I need to add the third and fourth clients to sign. And we'll just go ahead as, and add them in by email address. And if you've already invited them to the room, you can add them by room participants. All right, but in this case, I'll just go ahead and put email. So right here, let's say this one's going to be for, I don't know, Rachel Green while we're naming random TV stars and characters. Okay, and this will be Rachel at Amazon.com. So we're just going ahead and putting in manually the person's name and email address as needs to sign. Okay, that's important. You need to make sure their role is needs to sign. It defaults there, so it shouldn't be a problem. And if there's a fourth person, you know, go ahead, add them in. And needs to sign. That's important. All right, so now that we have added in our recipients, I'll go ahead and click on the next option on the very top right. Now we'll pull you into the envelope where if I scroll down, I will see the two client initials added automatically. So at this point, once the form is pulled into the envelope and you add the recipients, that's when you'll see the initial boxes and signature fields automatically added to the form as long as it's a DocuSign interactive form, meaning you were just able to start typing in it. Okay, so now that we have added those two clients automatically, and I can tell which clients those are, by coming up here on the top left to this little drop down box, it'll probably say one of your client's name with a colored dot next to it. So if I click on that, it'll show me all the clients from that list with their corresponding color. So I see the two that were added in were of course the first two, the ones that are added in my DocuSign room. So I can go ahead and actually select one of the others. And when I do that, you'll notice that it turns all these fields that, you know, specific color. So I can go ahead and grab the initial box, line it up wherever I'd like to drop that, wherever would make sense for your form, to click to drop that. And I can do the same thing for my other client. So clicking on the drop down again on the top left, I can select the other client's name, select to initial, and drop that. So scrolling down, in theory, I would need to go through and do that for each one of these pages here. Add the initial boxes in so your clients can sign. Okay, and of course, you'll want to check with your broker on compliance issues with your area. Of course, compliance varies depending on your area. So as far as to make sure you are completely in compliance on how they want you to handle these, you know, extra signatures, I would always recommend just double checking with your broker to guide you best since that does really vary depending on the area, but this is how you can do that with DocuSign, that system will allow you. So you can go through and do that with all the initial boxes, and the signature fields are the same concept, but I'll show you that. Um, now on the form, if there is a spot for the additional signatures, you can go ahead and add those, so I'll go ahead and add the other two clients here. And again, where you're dropping this on the form is something that you'll need to run by your client, by, I'm sorry, by your broker, right? If you're not sure on where to add the multiple signatures, right, the ad additional signatures on the actual form, run it by your broker. They'll be able to advise on compliance and let you know if there's also an additional signature addendum. All right, but that's how you can add the additional signature boxes, boxes and initial boxes. Uh, just a note, if you are adding these additional signature boxes to make sure to always add the date signed. So that will populate automatically when your client signs it. All right? And you can always click to move and drag the fields around like this if you need to at all as well. And also delete them by clicking on the field and clicking delete on the bottom right. All right, and once you're done adding all the fields, I always like to click on the recipient preview on the very top right. And that will show me the form as whatever signer is in the top left so that I can ensure I am able to sign as that client on all sites and I can view it exactly how that client would. So I really like to do that, especially for something like this. 
Um, and I can go ahead and X out whenever I feel satisfied with that. Make any final edits and go ahead and click send. And once that sends, you'll see that in your envelope section as waiting for others. And just a heads up, you will not see the completed form with all signatures until all parties have signed. So you may get notifications of, you know, one or two of your clients have signed. And um, if you go into the document section of your room, you will not yet see the form signed by your two clients until all parties have signed. So I just want to make a note of that just so you're not confused. You will... All parties will need to complete their action. Um, in this case, they'll all need to sign in order for that form to come back to your documents tab. At that point, that's when you'll see it in your DocuSign room, fully signed. All right, guys, if you have any questions on this, please let us know, support at scottleroymarketing.com. And again, I would recommend checking with your broker for any additional compliance issues with these multiple signers in your area. I hope this helped at least guide you on the right step. Have a great one, guys.